rolling. So we have our Ford Expedition here that we did the line pressure tests on. Now we're gonna make the second part of that video where we're gonna actually take down the valve body and the filter. We wanna cut the filter open, see how clogged it is. Cause remember we had low line pressure and uh, at idle. At wide open throttle or stall speed, our line pressure is fine. But at idle, our line pressures were low. We think the filter's clogged and the valve body probably needs to be cleaned and all the valves clean. So that's what this video is about. We're also gonna throw in there a little extra skill which is how to test solenoids so my college students you gotta uh, take a valve body apart put it back together cleaning it and making sure everything's all the valves are moving but you also need to do another skill which is testing solenoids we're going to cover both in this video we're going to drop the the transmission pan first i already made a video on how to do a uh, pan gasket i'm going to uh, work this way let the pan drop down, drain all the fluid. This is really stinky fluid. So I don't want to be wearing it. So I'm going to try. Maybe methodical. And have the fluid splash away from me. I can't tell you how many times I've worn transmission fluid. And I don't feel like wearing it today. But there's no guarantees I'm going to wear it or not. So just going to work back here. Need to get extension now. I'm gonna loosen these bolts. I'm not gonna take them out. There we go. Get that up there. Oh man, gosh. It's fried. You just, I just got blown away by the smell of this fluid with it coming down like that. You smell it, Jordy? No. You don't? Oh yeah, now I do. Yeah, it's strong. Burnt. Huh? Burnt. Absolutely. You don't want to be wearing this. But as a transmission tech, this is what you want. You know, I have to tell you, you don't make money if you don't overhaul transmissions. And if you don't overhaul transmissions, you know, it's not a good thing. It's a slow day. When you, when you smell this, you know you're getting a paycheck. So, it's not all bad. Last two bolts, I'm gonna be balancing it and removing the bolts at the same time. Last, two, last three bolts, sorry. Uh, here's something that's interesting most people don't know about this uh this is normal to be in a transmission that's never been apart before this is a throwaway or you could keep these but these are in the transmission where the uh where the dipstick tube goes into the transmission during assembly of the vehicle so when they find they they assemble the transmission without the dipstick then they pop the dipstick in or tube in and that plug that was sealing that goes in the pan and just lays in there so there's no other purpose but for assembly of the car on the assembly line but if you look at this you can see you probably have some bushing material right here see all the copper metal flakes real real metallic -y. see that and this this magnet way too much material here this is all like uh, friction material and, um, and the stuff that's been ground off the steel plates but if we if we look at this there's definitely some bushing material in this this front there's based on what I see in this pan this transmission should come out but we're going to try to see if we can make the pressures be right by cleaning the valve body so now let's go ahead and pull our filter off okay this is what we're going to cut open And let's see what it looks like out in the... So looking inside here, it does look like the, the element inside is plugged. But we're going to cut this open and see. Uh, this O-ring sometimes doesn't come with a filter, so it did with this one. If it doesn't come out, then you just pop it off with a screwdriver. But look at the little metal flakes. Looks like a Christmas ornament. 
or the bushing so yeah this thing is done so let's go over sensors sensors and actuators for our uh for our 70w so transmission range sensor right here we already made a video on our transmission range sensor this these go bad a lot also on the side of the transmission uh we have our output shaft speed sensor right here okay so that's our output shaft there's a plug here and for this particular model they're not using a turbine speed sensor uh, but this is where your turbine speed sensor would be or your input shaft speed sensor which is fine to your turbine they're not using this and i can't find one anywhere else on a transmission so it's very interesting this model doesn't come with it this is our tft sensor you see a little thermistor inside that's your fluid temperature sensor right here Okay, you see it inside. It's just a, a thermistor. And then these are our two schist solenoids, schist solenoid one, uh, one and two. This is our torque converter clutch solenoid. So if I were to put acronyms, this is our SS, maybe SS1, SS2, TCC. And then up inside here, this big housing behind the, the manual shift linkage is our EPC solenoid, which is our electronic pressure control solenoid. On the line pressure uh, video, we uh, actually did a uh, line pressure uh, after the EPC. So there was an EPC port on the back side of this transmission over here. And we did two uh, pressure readings, one for the line pressure from this port right here, and one for the EPC pressure from the port over on this side. So we're on our scanner now with the pan off. I'm gonna hit transmission and we wanna do our functional test. And when we do this, we're gonna actually wanna hear our solenoids make clicking noise. So we got automatic trans bench mode. Ooh, I like that. Let's see what we got here. Shift solenoid one on and off, shift solenoid two on and off, EPC uh, control, and then our TCC. Great, let's do it. We should hear a click, okay? Vehicle speed and transmission gear range are optional. No uh, vehicle speed sensor and transmission range sensor codes. Torque converter clutch cannot be engaged. Transmission range sensor and parker neutral. Turn key on, do not start engine. So we're right now, we are key on, engine off. We're underneath the vehicle. And so let's go ahead and do this. And we should hear a click. Bench test mode, Sh shift solenoid two. I'm gonna hit on. There we go. Off. On. Oh, we might have to reset it. There we go. On. I'll be quiet this time. It's this one. It's just solenoid two. Uh, two is this one right here, and it's clicking on and off. Bring the camera over so they could uh, buy it, so they could hear it. Ready? Let's go on. There we go. You can hear it clicking. Good, let's do the next one. Uh, we just did two, let's try one again. Continue. So it's gonna be this one. I'm gonna put my hand on it. On. There we go. Off. Do it one more time. Yep, that's the only way it's working. When I hit exit. And now let's go ahead and do our TCC solenoid, which is the one right next to it right here. And man, it's hot. Woo! So these things are energizing. There we go. So I'm gonna go off. Here we go, we're gonna go on. I can't even put my finger on it. I'm just gonna put it on the plastic right here. Nope, I don't feel it. There we go. Yep, I can hear the click. But man, I'm not happy with that. That thing is getting burning hot. The shift solenoids did not get hot. This one, I can't even put my finger on. It's like smoking hot. All right, so I'm not happy with our TCC solenoid getting as hot as it is. Let's go with our EPC solenoid. So now we're gonna do our EPC solenoid. And that's up here, up inside here. Here we go. Uh, 
it wants us to do with the vehicle running actually so see that how it has the rpm uh and then it has the shift solenoids so first gear obviously shift solenoid one's on shift solenoid two is off um, but I can control, it's a duty cycle, so I can control the percentage, and maybe I could feel that moving when I do this. Well, let's hit test. We're going to hit test. There we go. Um, oh, I could hear it moving. Go over there, Jordy. You could, uh, you could hear it buzzing. So let's, let's go to zero. That's zero. See if you can hear it buzzing. You can hear it. It has a high pitch sound. Now it's changing the pitch. So you can totally hear. The pitch of the duty of the of the piston inside modulating. Can you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm happy with my shift solenoids. I'm happy with my EPC. I am not happy that this thing is just burnt, ooh, burning hot. Uh, TCC solenoid, no question, I would change that. Before I disconnect the solenoids at the solenoids, I'm gonna disconnect the green transmission connector. And when I look at this, I'm gonna be looking for my pins, but I'm not happy with another thing I'm seeing here. You see a lot of fluid there? There should be no fluid on the bottom of this transmission connector. You see that? So that's a problem. Um, uh, maybe we have an internal seal or that transmission connector is cracked. Uh, we might want to take this transmission connector out of the case and inspect it because that's not, that's not good. The fluid is going up through the connector and contaminating the pins inside the connector. That's not a good thing. So we're down to our last bolt, and uh, this is a good time to put on glasses uh, because fluid is gonna be uh, hopefully, not, I let it drain. So, but you need to put a lot of pressure on your valve body, remove that bolt, and then drop that valve body down slowly. There we go. There's our valve body. Now we're ready to take this thing apart. I'm gonna take it over to our modified bench that we have. And then our next part is to take this thing apart. So we have our, uh, so we have our valve body removed from our transmission and it's been leaking like this for a good two or three minutes now. This is your torque converter draining. Uh, so when you drop the valve body, the valve body has a anti drain back valve built into it and that prevents your torque converter from draining like this uh, when the vehicle is off. Because if you do have a, a bad anti-drain back valve of some kind or a check ball, and that torque converter up in the front up here drains the fluid when the vehicle's off, then you'll have a delayed engagement when you put it back into gear and after starting the car. So this is normal uh, for the torque converter to drain after dropping the valve body, but I noticed something also really unique when I'm doing this. Uh, here's a rag that we uh, I was using, and watch the material, and you'll see that you can just see the 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 clutch material is just inside that fluid. It looks like a uh, silver blackish mess. Uh, so. It's very possible even after I uh, clean this valve body because this is just a case study. Uh, our uh, pressures might return to normal, but the transmission's definitely done. Um, so anyways, uh, let's uh, go ahead and cut this open and see what this looks like inside. So we're getting ready to clean our parts and I want to make sure that everyone knows uh, Ford and some other manufacturers like to use reusable pan gaskets. So when I order the filter kit, it does not uh, come with a pan gasket because the rubber gasket from the factory is reusable. So let's go ahead and start cleaning this uh, parts up. We already talked about everything and uh, then we'll cut the filter open. So we have our parts all clean with the solvent, but I never uh, am happy with solvent. So I'm actually going to clean everything with uh, brake clean and then let it drip dry with uh, brake clean. So 
Brake clean is the, the true way to clean any residue off of the transmission so it's ready. You can see that milky uh, solvent move, uh, coming off. This is why you do this. You don't want that in your transmission. Where transmit uh, where brake fluid dries real clean. So I'm gonna let that drip dry. The uh, pan gasket. I'm gonna go ahead and clean all this. My electronic uh, shift solenoid uh, uh, connectors right here. Clean those. If I don't, I'll do all my uh, transmission bolts. And when I use the uh, brake clean on that, I'll give it a little jump. Kind of move the rag around because remember this this thing was loaded with uh, clutch material, so I'm going to make sure I get as much of that off of my bolts as possible. Work clean, always clean. That's my uh, rule of thumb. The last thing about uh, cleaning, make sure you get everything off of this magnet and then and spray it off with brake clean. Don't ever install a transmission pan without this magnet. This magnet is vital in uh, keeping any of the particles away from your valve body. Uh, all right, so we got that uh, filter cut, did the plastic side. It just makes more sense to do. Let's open that up. Okay, so all of this is from me cutting. And you can tell if it's from the cutting, but let's look at that filter. A filter it looks pretty nasty. Let me get a box cutter so I can cut this out. And it's two piece. And yeah, you can tell I can squeeze it out. And you can just see the, the stuff in there. You know, so this thing is, is Com is completely filled with uh, clutch material like what I showed you when I squeezed the rag so um, nice little example of how filters are constructed uh, it's a good idea to always uh, if you uh, want to find out if your transmission needs to come out of the car and you're not you're unsure well, cut open the filter and check the filter and look for contaminants all this is from me cutting it though so you got to understand what's what's from cutting and what's from uh, the transmission. All right, we're gonna take this valve body apart. Uh, now let's go ahead and talk about shift solenoids and uh, the resistances. So you will always find on transmissions a spec for measuring the resistance of uh, shift solenoids. And this is actually a skill set that my college students actually have to complete. So I'm gonna use an ohm meter, just a standard ohm meter, blue point meter. And um, OL means out of limit, which means your leads aren't touching. You should always zero out your ohm meters. And, and, the, and this is an auto ranging, but this is really important you do this step because it actually teaches you tip pressure. Okay, so uh, you, ohm meters require a certain amount of tip pressure, but a lot of ohm meters require you to zero out the leads. It does tell you your leads are good. So now you go to the solenoids. So we're gonna do the, uh, the TCC solenoid right now, and I'm gonna to touch those two leads, and I'm gonna to check to see what my resistance is. And my resistance looks like it's 14 ohms, okay? So uh, we'll check that uh, against spec, but you also should check to see if it's shorted, because remember, this one got hot. This is the TCC, so maybe there's an internal short. There should be no connection between the terminal and the housing of the solenoid. If you do have a connection there, it's a short. All right, so now that's TCC solenoid. Now let's go to our shift solenoid. There we go. So I didn't have good tip pressure, just 26.8 ohms. And I wanna switch the negative lead to the other side because I'm assuming the middle lead is uh, a common ground. That's 53 ohms. And then let's uh, switch it to these, to the outer ones. 26. Okay, so my guess is, let's see, I have 53, 26. All right, so the, the common lead is this lead right here, the inner one. 
so then these are the that uh, the each solenoid. So 26.9 and 26.5 for uh, both of these. We could look at a wiring schematic to figure out which terminal is which. Now let's check to see if they're internally grounded. And that's good. That's good. So when you're checking to see if they're shorted inside, you want to see at a limit, which means there's no connection between the terminal and the case. And I should go and check each terminal as well. Okay, and I go to this one. Now I'm going to check each terminal and make sure it's not shorted. And it doesn't seem shorted. Okay, so this is the common terminal for uh, probably, I would take it back, it's probably uh, power. And then these are how the transmission grounds it. So we send power to the solenoids when you turn the key on through this terminal and the computer grounds these terminals to turn on each solenoid. That's why I put the black lead here on the, and then I measured the, the ohms for each solenoid. All right, so this is a, a, a very common test for transmissions. Now, a good rule of thumb is though, these things are not powered up when I'm doing that. So this is what I like to use, which is the hook. And it's done by Power Pro. And so the hook is very unique because I could actually check the resistance of these solenoids with the power being applied to them. So I'm gonna actually use a jumper uh, battery. I'm gonna hook this up. So just a common jumper battery. That's gonna power up my meter. And then what's neat about this is we could actually apply ground using this lead, and then we could apply power using this lead. And it's gonna tell us the volts being applied. So the battery right now is fully charged. It's 20, 12.6, it's perfect battery. So this is a perfect battery that we're using right there, 12.6, okay? So let's do the easy one. I'm gonna hook this up to uh, one terminal, which is the ground. And then I'm gonna hook this up to the other terminal without touching the housing. And I'm gonna power this solenoid up. And I should feel that click. All right, so it's reading 13.5, uh, 13.6 13 ohms. And now I'm gonna apply pressure and it's gonna tell me the amperage that it uses. Let's see, there we go. And it's using 0 0.871, it's kind of bouncing between 871 and 872. And now it's up to 15.30 ohms. See, remember this one is the one that got hot, okay? So you wanna check this solenoid with it being applied. So I'm measuring 14.14 ohms with it off. And then when I apply it, you hear it click. It's telling me the amperage, but it's also telling me the ohms as it's applied with the, the voltage. So it went to 15.69. Oh, the ohms is actually rising. It started at 15.6. Now we just reached over 16 and it's still climbing. So that solenoid, as I apply power to this, the resistance is climbing and the amperage is lowering. So we're at 16.5 right now, still climbing. Let's see if it's hot. Yeah, it's getting a little warm. Remember this was glowing hot. I tend to think that with this being applied with the ohms going up, this solenoid needs to be replaced. Let's go check now the other ones. So I condemned that. Uh, solenoids so now let's go ahead and check the other solenoids and by the way you replace these in pairs so if one's bad you would replace both there we go 26.17 ohms i hear a click and 27.39 ohms and it looks like 0.46 amps 0.463 amps or 463 milliamps. So 27 point, yeah, it's about averaging 27.4 ohms. And then with it off is 26.8 ohms. Okay, so the question arises, why do I wanna use this instead of a regular power probe? 
because this tells me the uh, not only the voltage, but it tells me the, the ohms and the amps with the circuit on. The other power probe does not have that ability. Uh, regular DVOM or digital multimeter, you measure ohms, but then you, if you want to measure, you, you can't measure ohms with uh, power being applied using this meter. This is the only meter I know that you can measure the ohms with it being applied. Okay, and it's probably doing the mathematical Ohm's law formula internally, but it's doing it live as the amperage and the voltages are changing. So you can see the numbers bounce around. Uh, really good for checking a solenoid that's overheating, like I was talking about, okay? So let's go check the last one. Twenty five point eight four ohms with it off. Twenty six point nine ohms with it on and it's drawing four hundred and seventy milliamps or point four seven zero amps. It has gone up to twenty seven ohms and dropped down to point four six three amps. But it's not it's not changing as drastically as this solenoid. So this solenoid's overheating, these solenoids, no problem. So we could change TCC, remember you would change these two in bare, but they're both good. So this top plate is just a passage plate. There's really no, as I recall, no check balls underneath this. It's been a while since I did this valve body. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take this off. You, if you want to, you could go in a star pattern. Uh, usually, uh, with uh, taking valve bodies apart, I don't bother. Now, if I suspect that there would be a check ball or pressure relief valve underneath here, uh, I'd be a lot more careful. And there are some that are alignment pins, so these are special. Okay. So that required one right here, and I believe this one was the other one, but you know what? I didn't pay attention. Darn it. Here's an example of not paying attention, and I just can't put these bolts wherever I want them. All right, let's pull this plate off. And look at that. So you can see the passages all fill up with that sediment. This is a nice little example of what you're looking for. All right, so now let's flip this valve uh, body over. I'm being very careful to make sure there's no check balls here and there's not. Okay. Now, oh, and by the way, you should pay attention. Uh, previous video I showed part one, I showed us, or actually it was a different video, but I showed making this table. Working really good, draining right into that uh, hole. And I just used a regular old TV cart from the high school. So I made these little dents so the fluid could go and follow it. Nice little uh, trick. Here's also another little trick. So this is a plate that holds the separate plate onto the valve body. Um, this goes into one of the servos, same with this, but you notice it has a specific orientation. You just can't put this wherever you want. You have to orientate it to the way it is. Same with this one. It has a flat spot here, has a little notch here. Okay, so those are the little details that uh, you need to be paying attention to. I'm also keeping these bolts separate from the other bolts because they're, they serve a different purpose, okay? So let me go ahead and see if I get this off. There we go, get this one off. Okay, and I'm checking to see the, the amount of sediment in the passages here. Not a lot on this one. Pull that out. Okay, now let's get the separate plate off and let's see what we got underneath here. And I'm gonna be looking very closely for any kind of check balls and things. And I'm also checking to see where the sediment is residing. The majority of it is up here where the torque converter is filled, okay? And the cooler lines are filled. So you'll see this is this is like the heart 
of the transmission. Same with here. Here's where your EPC solenoid's at, right here, okay? So your EPC solenoid sits here, and this is the bore that, uh, that it is attached to right there. So anyways, let's set this aside. So I'm looking at the check balls. Here's a ch uh, one, two, three. And then this is a uh, check ball that moves back and forth, uh, blocking passages, okay? Four, five, six, seven, eight, eight check balls. And then we have a, uh, I don't really know what the name of this plunger is right here. But I do have a plunger. It is not directional because it's the same on both sides, okay? So now I'm gonna take these check balls out. I'm gonna be real careful not to lose these because uh, if you get a, uh, uh, a valve body uh, rebuild kit or a shift kit, it will give you new check balls. But we're not gonna be uh, doing that. We're just, this is just a uh, demonstration video. So we don't wanna lose these. So I'm gonna be very methodical in keeping track of these, okay? And this is what scares most people is the check balls, the pressure relief valve there. I don't see a pressure relief valve here specifically. So, uh, um, yeah, so that's not a problem. Sometimes you'll have a spring with a pressure relief valve on top. Uh, but the bottom line is you gotta really research where these go. If you ever have a passage, let me go ahead and drain some of this fluid out. And notice I don't completely tip this over because sometimes there's little uh, pieces in here and they'll fall out by dumping this over. I just want to drain it, okay? And so sometimes there'll be a pass, uh, a check ball spot like this with no check ball. If that was the case, then I take my screwdriver and then I put a little X. So anytime I see a spot where it looks like it takes a check ball, but there's no check ball, I put a little X in the bore to remind me that one doesn't take it, okay? All right, so now we're ready to clean this. And I'm gonna use my uh, brake clean, okay? And I'm just gonna hold that up and let it drain right in. I'm gonna get this all clean and then we're gonna take some valves out. You can see the crud coming out of here, look at that. And you want to get the passages so you want to go in the direction of the bore so this bore is going this way uh this bore is going this way these are going uh, vertically too okay so you want to get that uh in the bores itself and you can see brake clean does a wonderful job cleaning valve bodies all right, so I was spraying and then I noticed something. I told you never to take this and just dump it upside down. And here's why. If I did, then I would not know where this filter goes right here, okay? So this would have just fell out. It would have been in the pan. Now, you're, you're gonna be uh, very frustrated because now you won't know what slot this goes in. But by being very methodical and not dumping my valve body over, I could go ahead and figure this out. Okay, but let me go ahead and show you another thing that happened. What happened was I uh, dropped the transmission pan, uh, valve body and then I noticed in the pan, I had this little filter. Well, where in this valve body or this case does this go? Cause this was sitting on top of the valve body. And I actually figured it out. It goes right here. But see, so you, you might not even know, but it, does it go this way or does it go this way? And it's just a puzzle. So little details about like that is what really makes transmissions complicated. Also what makes transmissions complicated is all these passages. Everyone thinks you need to understand what these passages are for. You do if you really got to pinpoint where the leak is. But most of the time, you just clean these passages. You don't need to worry about, okay, this, this one right here is my line pressure and this one right here is for my my uh, second brake band. You don't need to worry about that. You need to worry about making it clean and making sure there's no leaks with air pressure checking and uh, clean the surfaces really well. Um, but the, this little maze is what scares people so much about transmissions. 
So the question came up as we were making this video, why can't we pressure check with the air nozzle your passages and in, in your uh, clutches on this transmission? Because you, the reason why is you can't get a good seal with the nozzle tip of your air, air nozzle. So Ford makes a plate that you bolt up to this without the valve body and gives you your pressure port. So some transmissions, like the video I just posted, you could air check all your passages and all your clutches. With some transmissions like this, you gotta bolt a plate up that will give you holes to air check your clutches. We're in uh, all data right now and we need to get some information before we can continue. Uh, we definitely need to know what valves are in each bore. So I'm right now in the automatic transaxle service and repair procedures in the 4S70W. And then I want to go ahead and I want to disassemble and assemble of subassemblies. And then from there, you'll see that I have a main control valve body. So this is the picture that we really need to uh, print out because this is telling us what valves are in each bore, how they're assembled. Uh, specifically, if you look at uh, this valve up here, which is 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, there's two passages because there's a retainer that's 19. That keeps this valve away from this valve with retainer 16. So there's two retainers, retainer 16 and 19, two separate valves serving two separate uh, purposes in one bore, okay? So uh, here's that little filter I was talking about. It's kind of showing you where it goes, but it's not. this is typical for a valve body exploded view. Uh, it shows you the roundabout area it goes. It doesn't show you exactly where it goes, okay? So you definitely need this. So we're gonna print this out, okay? And then now we also need to have our uh, part description, which tells you which valves are which. So there's three, it's such a long list. We actually need three or uh, two uh, lists to tell us what each one is. And then uh, this is telling us our uh, shift solenoids, okay? And then it will tell you exactly what we've been doing, which is how to remove all the pieces to this valve body, where the check balls go. Um, where that uh, is, uh, that was the part that I didn't know what it was. This is the converter drain back valve that I talked about earlier. So that little plunder right there was the converter drain back valve. So when we remove the valve body, that's why the valve was, um, but that's why the torque converter was draining. This is showing us uh, the top plate, okay? Uh, so it's telling us there are 13 of these bolts, okay? It is not telling us where those special bolts go. At least right now, let's see what this one is. A lot of warnings or cautions, okay? Uh, here's the valve body, it's uh, bolts. There is a torque sequence. We better follow this torque sequence when we bolt on this plate, okay? So uh, that's really important that we do that. 89, uh, I'm gonna print this chart out so I have it with me. So those are 89 inch pounds. Here's all the check balls. And then here's the plates that go into the servo bores, 89 inch pounds for those, 89 inch pounds for the solenoids, okay? But we didn't remove the solenoids. So we're gonna print out for sure where the check balls go, where the torque sequence is for that one plate, okay? And let's see if there was a torque sequence. There is no torque sequence for the plates that are underneath. And then uh, we also need to uh, have the printout of, the, of the, the chart index and the exploded view of the valve body. Okay, so we have our valve body, we have our exploded view. We're gonna actually pull this valve out right here. This is our main pressure boost valve, which is one, two, three, four, and five on the exploded view. And if I go to the index, it is a main pressure boost valve. Uh, so we're gonna pull that one out. And then five is the main regulator valve right here. So that controls our line pressure, okay? I'm also gonna go to our pressure regulator valve right here, which is 
uh, eight, nine, and 10. So eight, nine, and 10 is gonna be this bore right here. So we're gonna pull these two valves out and then we're gonna put this back together. Uh, for my students, you could pull any valve out that you want using this map, but you must list what valve you pull out. So it's good to have a magnet and it's good to have a pocket screwdriver. The magnet you could use to put pressure on to the valve. You wanna uh, put it, take the pressure off the little retaining clip. And then you're gonna bring this up, okay? Set that aside, and then this valve should come out. And I'm gonna pull this valve out. And it might be stuck in there, so I need to give it a little wiggle. This is another way you could check your valves. So the valve actually is working pretty good. Uh, I could tell by moving that valve. You never wanna, when you do this, you never wanna have it slip on your pocket screwdriver. You wanna make sure you get it down on the inside of the land in the valley. If you slip on top of this valve, you groove it, okay? So you gotta be real careful with that. All right, so now I'm gonna use this to pull my valve out. And here we go, okay? So they talk about a boost valve. So a boost valve is gonna be a valve within a sleeve. This is my boost valve right here, okay? And when I check these, you hear that clicking? That is working properly. So really all I need to do with this boost valve is I need to clean it with some brake clean. Okay? So I'm gonna clean this as I take it apart. And I'm gonna put it back together. And again, like I say, oh, hear the difference? Much better. There we go, there's our boost valve, okay? Then we have a blue spring. Uh, the, the big thing about springs is they only go in one place. You gotta keep track of your springs. That's why I recommend changing a valve one at a time, okay? Uh, I don't recommend changing uh, or taking valves out uh, where they're all out of the, uh, the valve body at the same time because uh, it, it gets confusing. Okay, uh, I'm pushing on the valley. I'm not pushing on the on the land. So again, you want to make sure you don't groove those lands because if you groove those lands, you're in a lot of trouble. And here's the valve. Okay. And there we go. So now I have that valve out of the bore right here. I'm going to clean that bore out with some brake clean. I'm gonna clean that bore out with some brake clean. I will spray it with a little bit of uh, uh, air too to blow it out. So I'll get an air nozzle, clean my valve, okay? And so there's our valve. What I want my students to do so I know they took the valve out is I wanna take a picture of this, put the valve back in and then do another valve. I used to have students take every valve out and take a picture of it, but then they got all the pieces messed up because somebody jiggles the table and then all the pieces go flying and then they get the springs messed up. They put the valves in the wrong bore. Remove one valve at a time, take a picture for the assignment and then put the valve back in. If you did a lot of transmissions, yeah, take all the valve. Or you, if I did like a hundred of these transmissions, eventually I would know where all the pieces go and I just take the valves out, have a way of keeping track where bore they go in, clean the, case, clean the valve body case and then put the valves back in. But for, for a, a college or a high school purpose, one valve to show me you know how to pull a valve out, know how to test a boost valve by shaking it, and then put it back in. So let's do that right now, okay? So first off, let me go get an air nozzle and let's blow this out. So I'm gonna take some air. is to maybe take some transmission fluid and put it on there too. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna clean it with some valve uh, or some brake clean. And then I'm gonna take my pocket screwdriver, which is what your best tool, and I'm feeling to see how it slides in. So I'm not only just pushing in, I'm feeling for any kind of restriction that's preventing that valve from moving in. And 
I feel a little bit, and there we go, now it freed up, okay? So it's all about feel, feel, okay? So you just don't shove it in there. As you're pushing in, you're feeling for any grittiness, anything that is resisting the valve from going into its bore. Now I could put this in with the boost valve in there. I'm gonna shove this in. Then I'm gonna take my little magnet. I'm gonna push that in till I see the, the uh, spot for my clip, okay? Which is right there. And then I'm gonna put my little clip in and make sure it seats all the way down. And there we go. Okay, now for the, uh, that was the boost valve. Now let's go ahead and let's do the main pressure regulator valve. Again, I wanna go ahead and put the press, take the pressure off of this retaining spring right here. And then I'm gonna take that re retaining spring, preferably not with it, flying all over the place and now let's go ahead and take this valve out so again you push on the valley you don't push on the lamb okay and this is under pressure so i'm going to make sure that i have my hand here so it doesn't go flying and let's see if i and remember as i'm doing this i'm feeling for that that valve to make sure it's uh, moving freely Let me get a pair of needles. All right, so you gotta be real careful with needle nose. Uh, it does, da it damages the plugs. Okay, so I'm gonna be very careful and I'm just gonna try to work that out without trying to make it slip. And there we go, okay? So again, and you might wanna take some emery cloth and polish wherever you grabbed it. There's another boost valve in there. That boost valve is working really well. Look at that, okay? Oh, I did a mistake, you know? I dumped out that boost valve. What happened to this boost valve was directional. I just screwed up. Looking at this is not directional, but I could have dumped this out, flipped this around, and now if this was a directional piece, I just created a shift problem. So again, it's that attention to detail. Why does people not want to do transmissions it's one they're they're uh they are a lot of pieces in there and it's complicated but two people don't want to pay attention to detail like you need to so it's all about that little details that make whether a transmission fails or works and notice i have a clean transmission table too so i clean my table before i did this all right, so now here's another example of I don't have a land to push on. So then I'm gonna go ahead and grab my air nozzle. I'm gonna blow that out because I don't wanna take a chance of damaging that valve. There we go. Move that valve right out. Now I can go ahead and remove it the rest of the way. Let's see, almost. No, I don't need to blow it a little more. You don't want to use a screwdriver and score it. There we go. There we go. Look at it on this side. See that right there. And I can blow that valve right out. That is so much better than you taking a screwdriver and scoring the land. Okay. You know, I, whenever I'm using the screwdriver, I'm going down deep into the valley and pushing this. I'm not pushing on the on the edge of this where I score the valve because you if you score the valve you just ruin it. Okay, you got to make sure these valves are not scored in the removal process. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean my my bore. A lot of brake clean being used, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and blow that bore out. Uh, maybe a good idea. This would be a good idea to cover it. Never use a rag to wipe anything. Notice I use either brake clean or air. I don't wipe uh, with my uh, rag because that puts lint in there. All right, now let's go back together. And again, you're feeling as it goes in. How does that valve go in? It should go in nice and smooth. 
It should not grab and should go all the way to the end of the case or to the bore right here. And you can see I got that valve moving perfectly inside there. Okay, put my spring in there. Sometimes I put my, my spring on my pocket screwdriver and guide it in because the bores are pretty tight. And so you're gonna have to use that uh, screwdriver sometime as a guide to get it in there. Make sure my booze valve is clean. And I'll put that in, slide that little plug back in here, and then put my little retaining clip on. Okay, now, as far as retaining clips go, here's a valve that I was talking about where you have a retaining clip for this valve and then you have a retaining clip for this valve. This is two separate valves serving two separate purposes separated by this little retaining clip right here. And this would be why you wouldn't want to dump over this valve body and, and jet, because if this were to pop out, good luck in knowing where that goes, okay? So that's why you never want to dump this valve body over and bang it or, because these little pieces fall out and then it is a maze to figure out where those pieces go. All right, we're ready to go back together. I modeled how to take off two, two valves. I would have took a picture of each valve for the assignment. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this uh, back together. I'm gonna do the bottom plate, okay, first. So the bottom plate, we went ahead and printed that out, okay? It's 89 inch pounds. There's a torque sequence for the top, but there was not a torque sequence for the bottom. So I'm gonna leave that there. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get all my bolts started for this transmission. So put this underneath here. And here's my anti-drain back valve, put that in. I wanna make sure my uh, that little filter is in place right here, okay? And here's my plate. I'm not chaining the gasket, because like I say, this is a demonstration video. Uh, make sure my rotation is in the right rotation. I think the flat side was here. Yep. Oh, wait, the one thing I did forget was where our check balls go. So let's go ahead and put our check balls in. Almost forgot that. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're there. One flat side here. Okay, so we didn't know where these pins went because we were I was an idiot and I didn't pay attention to it. It looks like the pin went here. And so I could put the, make sure I know where that goes. And as I'm doing this, I'm gonna try to figure out where that other pin goes. These are all the same length. So I'm not really worried about that. And I already cleaned all these pretty much. And see, here's what would be a, a tendency to want to use a rag. I'm not going to use a rag. I would clean it with more brake clean. But like I say, this is a demonstration video. So don't wipe anything off with a rag. Uh, some uh, gaskets, by the way, are bonded to the separator plate. So I have a valve body gasket here. Uh, this one I believe is bonded to the separator plate. So you can't scrape this off. In order to replace this gasket, you gotta replace your separator plate. So keep that in mind. All right, go ahead and grab my, my gun. I'm just gonna run these down. Flip this over and I'll install the other one. So they're gonna be a special bore that goes all the way through. Let's see. Looks like that one right there. And it looks like this one right here. Those are the ones that look like it takes the two long bolts. We'll figure it out. So I'm going to take this one first, run this down. Rolling. So I found my two bolts that uh, that are the alignment pins, okay, right there, 
okay? So it's really important that these are in the right place, okay? Because that aligns my separator plate. So that's why I didn't want to torque these uh, uh, earlier, because I want to make sure I was uh, all aligned. Now I can go ahead and uh, torque these. We got those alignment pins in, no torque sequence. So you're just gonna go until it clicks. But I am gonna try to do it a little bit in the star pattern, or not a star pattern, but try to torque these down in a in a pattern that brings them down gradually. 89 is not much. All right, and then after you do that, then you go around and do all of them again, one more time, and not follow that torque sequence. And here's why I recommend doing that, okay? You don't wanna go past the click. Uh, I did a C5 transmission when I was learning transmissions for the uh, very first time I was, I was doing them as a side job and I left one bolt loose that was in the passage for the uh, for the pump and it took about 500 miles for that bolt to back out fall into the passage and then be sucked up into the pump It was one bolt out of like 50 bolts but I left that one bolt loose and it cost me a torque converter and a pump assembly and the labor to change it all. All because I didn't go and verify that I got them in all at the end. So that's just a little FYI. Get, get it where you know all the bolts are torqued. Okay, so this is the, the plate. This one has a torque sequence. So we're gonna follow that exactly. So if, if, if the manufacturer gives you a torque sequence, I suggest following it. I don't suggest ignoring it because it's there for a reason. Okay, somebody a lot smarter than us decided that that was an important step. Okay, and then there's transmissions out there that don't require it. So if it doesn't require it, then just torque away. I still recommend a star pattern. So I'm gonna use this, but I'm just gonna run it down until it hits. I'm not gonna torque it. Get our little map out. There's our torque sequence. We already already set the 89 inch pounds. I'm gonna position the valve body exactly the way that it is in the picture, and then I'm just gonna go in the mirror quarter. So looks like one right here, and then just follow that pattern. So it's having me actually do the alignment pins first. So these are the alignment pins, two, and then three is this one, four is right across, five's right here, six, seven, eight, nine, and this one. 10, 11, 12, 13, and now go and just make sure you got them all. Like I say, don't do my mistake. I did it one time, I swore I'd never do it again, where I didn't go over, I got them already torqued. I'm just making sure I didn't miss any. Because if you miss one, it can be catastrophic. So the previous video, I talked about these extension rods, okay? It really helps with aligning the manual shift valve. Find the one that matches your valve body bolt, okay? Now we're gonna go ahead and go in underneath the vehicle. All right, so I'm cleaning this off with some brake clean. The only place I'm okay with wiping with a rag is where the pan gasket goes. The rest of it, I'm not okay wiping it off with a rag, okay? Then we're gonna take our air nozzle and we're gonna actually blow that off. Okay, now we have our alignment dowels. I'm gonna go
go opposite corners, okay? So let's see. I don't want to go all the way up against the subframe because that could be a problem. I'm going to go right here. You could pick, just as long as you pick like opposite corners. And then this will really help. And uh, let's go with this one right here, right by our manual shift valve. All right, we're ready. Let's do this. So I organized my uh, bolts into long bolts and short bolts. The long bolts are gonna go on the plate here, okay? Any hole that's on the plate is gonna take a long bolt. The short bolts are gonna be off of the plate on our valve body here. So right now to install my valve body, I'm only interested in starting one bolt and running it down, okay? And that will hold it up. So I'm gonna pick a bolt like it was the middle one that I took uh, left uh, last. That's gonna be the one I'm gonna use to start it. Okay, and I'm gonna just line this up here. Get that into that alignment pin right there. Get this one into this alignment pin. And now that guides you right up nice and neat. Line up that manual shift valve that I talked about that so many students forget to get aligned. Now I'm gonna start that. Oh, well, that was a good catch. Get that aligned right there. Get it started two or three turns. I have my little electric gun ready to go. I'm just gonna run it down to hold it. Now I could take my hand off. I could take these alignment pins out. It makes it so easy. Let's do all our long bolts first. We want to do all our short bolts. That's all our long bolts. Now let's start all our short bolts. And two of them are going to be special. One's going to have the EPC solenoid uh, retaining uh, bracket. Okay, so this is our EPC solenoid. Ah, it's gonna be this one, it's gonna be a long one. So I need to take that out. There we go. Took care of that bracket. Now we can go ahead and uh, take care of these. There's that one. This is the one that goes onto our uh, manual shift valve linkage. So number one is this one. Number two. Number three. Number four is this one. this so we got to get the detent onto the and then here's the other detail it needs to overlap or the horseshoe needs to go around this anchor uh um bracket right here so that's good that's eight nine So it kind of did a star pattern, and then once it did a star pattern in the center, then it did a circular pattern all the way around. We're ready to torque these. So I torqued them all in the pattern that it recommended. So now this is when you go and make sure you don't did not miss any. You're not going past the click. All you're doing is doing the click. I'm just gonna work my way down, making sure I didn't work uh, miss any of these. That's your worst nightmare.
So there we go. That's why I do that. Okay. Had one that I missed. And I did that uh, sequence by memory. So it's just a, a perfect example of why even with a map, you make mistakes. Okay. So you want to find that one bolt that's loose. So now let's put our uh, electrical connector up. Going to click that into place, make sure it's good. And, the, uh, and the, uh, for time, we're not going to pull that connector out that we had disconnected. So, uh, um, but that would be an example with the fluid that was in that connector. We would have wanted to take this off, but we're running out of time. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. Manual shift valves in, detents in, this is in. We're ready for our filter. Take our filter, put this in right here and just pop that in. Now we're ready to put our pan. Uh, that little plug, don't need it anymore, okay? So that, like I say, that was only to uh, for the assembly line. It's not for here. Uh, I did say you could wipe off the flange or the transmission pan gasket goes that's the only place on a transmission i recommend using a pan or a rag otherwise rags are not allowed so now let's go ahead and go up with this i can't get my finger up there too many people would try to do it with their fingers and they would cross thread it you know what this is when you let the tool work for you where you get into places where you can't get at with your fingers yeah so those two bolts uh we'll go ahead and run these down with the ratchet then we'll use the air tool and we're going to pull that little plug out and put our transmission gauge up here and we're going to see if we did anything to our line pressure at idle all right so we're going to get our gauge in there and see if we changed anything i can't guarantee you that we did but it's a good video to demonstrate a lot of different skills that go into transmission. It's reverse. A lot higher pressure than we saw before. Control. Drive. Right. So, Mr. Lear, film you filmed this, right, Mr. Yeah, Lear? I sure did. And it was vibrating up around 180 to 110. And here's the thing: when you forget to disconnect or connect the main connector, it goes to maximum line pressure and it defaults to second gear. So, if I were to drive this car with this disconnected, it would have only had second gear. And it would have, and if you notice the engagement before when we were checking it was really strong engagement. So I forgot to hook this up. There we go. That little step right there will bring my line pressure hopefully down to where it should be. Nice steady needle. Look at that. Right at 60. See how the engagement is. There's reverse, nice engagement. I'm at about 120. I believe I didn't have a problem with reverse, but I did have a problem with drive. There's drive two. And there's drive one. So 90, drive one. 90, drive two. 90 drive three or drive and then neutral and then reverse 
and you feel that engagement so there's reverse there's drive no delay huh yeah the delay's gone yeah the delay is gone no delay at all just by cleaning the valve body changing the filter we changed the pressures and uh we still know that the transmission's fried but it's amazing what those little valves control and in this case they control your line pressure 